You're listening to Win Win, an entrepreneurial community with your host, Ben Wolf. And welcome to Win Win, an entrepreneurial community. I am your host, as always, Ben Wolf. We are going to learn from our guest today how to be a power connector and achieve your business goals. Uh, uh, to achieve your business goals or to get funded. Uh, I advise everybody once again to make sure to subscribe, leave a review to uh, on the show, makes it more accessible obviously to yourself, makes it more accessible to other people when there's more subscribers, when there's more people leaving reviews. So definitely encourage you to pause and go ahead and do that. And uh, with that, you know whether you're watching this at whatever platform, whether you're listening to this on whatever platform it might be, uh, with that, I am very excited to get into introducing my guest today. She is the author of the best-selling book, How to Be a Power Connector, the 5 plus 50 plus 100 rule for turning your business network into profits. I'm going to include links to these emails in the social media posts and in the episode description so you can uh, get a hold of these books, which you know I'll, I'll say a, a drop about in a minute, but have been very helpful and influential to me. Uh, she also is the author of Crack the Funding Code, How Investors Think and What They Need to Hear to Fund Your Startup. She has been the CEO of both private and public companies, held management positions with Fortune 500 companies uh, as an entrepreneur, as a sought-after sought public speaker, a startup advisor, and an angel investor. You could learn more about her at judyrobinette.com, and that's Robinette with two Ts and one B, uh, judyrobinette.com. And uh, with that, I welcome Judy Ravenette. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Well, it, believe me, it, it's my my privilege and honor to to have you on the show. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it's uh, since uh, I don't know months ago when I heard about you from Dr. Gleb Zapersky, who was also a previous guest on the show. Uh, heard about you from uh, for, from him. Uh, read your book and implemented it in my in in my practice. I mean, since. Since then, for several quarters now, I've had metrics, actually, just to tell my personal side of, of the value that you're sharing is uh, I have two personal metrics with I have quarterly goals around and weekly goals uh, about uh, taking a certain number of networking actions, you know, towards people that are strategically I want to keep in touch with. I uh, hope this doesn't give away too much for all the people out there <laughs> listening to this and it's no, like, no. I don't know why he's reaching out to me. But uh you know, in terms of like also giving value, giving referrals, I have a separate number that I track around what I'm giving specifically, not just who I'm connecting with. Uh, so really, really appreciate what you've taught. It's really helped me and I've gotten clients because of it. And uh, so it's just, it's just great to have you on. That's, that's the first thing. Well, thank you. Um, so with that, I guess if, if you could just, you know, quickly give us a, a you know, a quick two minute history. How, how'd you get into this? How'd you become <laughs> the power connector, you know, leader and, you know, and the funding leader and angel investor, like just quick two minute history. Obviously there's more that you could say in two yeah, minutes, yeah. but just a quick summary. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I worked in the fortune uh, 50, um, the corporate world and I'd look around and I'd see people getting promoted that didn't appear to be smarter, working harder than me. And I thought, what is going on here? And I taught, been taught like middle, middle class kids and uh, keep your head down, work hard, uh, don't ask for help, people will notice. And I found out people weren't noticing. And what mm -hmm. I noticed was behind that aura of the formal hierarchy in a corporation were the power brokers, the connectors who were helping make things happen. So I was terribly shy, mm -hmm. didn't dare talk to anybody. And I got the book, How to Win Friends and, and Influence People. Uh, and I made it my rule to be generous and to help others. And one of the things I teach is called the three golden questions. You share what project you're working on with people. And then you ask, what other ideas do you have for me? And number two, who else do you know I should talk to? And this is, you know, made me friends with Mark Burnett, who's the CEO of MGM, started The Apprentice and, and all of those. I've been on panels with Mark Cuban, been at Royal Palaces. Um, and, and if you saw the movie Napoleon Dynamite, you know, I, I grew up in that town. Um, and uh, so I, I learned that I needed other people to help me. I couldn't do it my own. Um, I also found out there's no lack of resources on this planet. There's 7.5 billion people, 369 trillion in private global wealth, information doubling every you know, month or whatever, and countless, countless ideas. But you've got to be in the right room. 
and kind of be clear on what direction you're going to and then figure out who you need to know. So, uh, and for the investing, I was um, asked uh, to help a startup called Skull Candy that no one had ever heard of that had about a quarter of a million in sales. And um, I met with the founder and uh, he'd been bankrupt a few times and I helped mitigate the risk and and helped him. He went public for just under a half a billion and I became enamored with, with funding. And I'd been the mm -hmm. CEO of a public company and had raised millions of dollars. And I wrote both of the books because I wanted people to see there's a path forward and specifically how to do it that was practical, that could make sense. You don't need a gazillion amount of right. people. Right. Not, it's not like this black box that is this mystery that no one can, yeah. no one yeah. can access. But, you know, if you were raised lower middle class, you know, I never knew of a millionaire, let alone billionaires that I'm friends with now. And I, I thought I'd been trained, you know, or, or taught, get a job. You know, you need right. to have a job and work, work eight to five. Mm -hmm. um, and I got tired of being poor. <laughs> right. Well, that obviously is very encouraging just for people to hear, especially the part you said at the beginning about being shy, you know, oh. being uh, not unnatural, you know, not, you don't have to be that natural extrovert uh, to, you know, to be, to be that connector that becomes that, you mentioned the word power broker before, I mean, maybe it doesn't have a positive connotation, but to be that, what, what ends up being eventually, I guess, some kind of power broker uh, as a connector, because you got the relationships and, and people have your trust and respect. And without being, you know, without being a big extrovert, it's just, I think that's yeah, and an important thing for people to get. It's really the power to make things happen, uh, good things for other people. You know, I, I don't see any negative connotations. I go out of my way to try to help everybody that reaches out to me. Although like with you, I was a, a bit late in getting back to you, but you know, often call them on, on the phone to surprise them. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. For, for listeners out there, I, I asked you, I asked for your advice on something and you're like, like same day or I forgot what, you know, or the next day, uh, a few days ago, you just gave me a call. So I appreciate that. Yeah. And so I was shy. I didn't dare talk to anybody. I thought, why would anybody want to talk to me? Huh. Um, and so it took me a while, but then I made it a game to see if I could come up with a reason to talk to anyone anywhere. Uh, and that worked really well. Huh. Um, and so now I'm at the point I can talk to anyone anywhere. And like, you know, I, uh, talk about my three golden questions. I uh, a couple of years ago was at Pebble Beach on the 18th hole at 10 cents uh, booth. They'd spent a million dollars on it and it was all private invite. And there was a billionaire VC guy that I knew, knew of, I didn't know him. And I got introduced to him. And, you know, a couple of minutes later, I said, what do you need? And he said, I'm having the worst time finding um, a expert to lead a conference on AI, artificial intelligence. And I said, let me, let me give you a couple of names. And so you quickly, or I finally fi figured out if you're alive, you've got problems. Everybody's got problems. Mm. And your problem is somebody else's solution. And there's, there needs to be a match. And you can become, easily become a, an expert. Probably the, the most profound thing you can do is just listen. And people will say to me, well, I don't have anything to give. Well, sure you do. You can listen, you can make an introduction, you can share a best article you've read or a book and you learn to add value um, and you know, the world just opens up. Right, and what I guess one of the biggest, you know, there's so many places you can go out and meet people and collect business cards, right? People call it networking. Like what's the difference? I mean, for those people who are not familiar with this concept and what you teach about, what, what does being a power connector or a connector mean as opposed to just networking? Yeah, so I hate the term networking. I think it's icky and manipulative. Uh, I, you know, most of the meetings you, you go to, they're typical network groups. It's all wannabes, you know, people that are usually in your situation. So they don't have the resources at their fingertips that, that you might need. So I will tell people if they're interested in like mid-tier uh, businesses, uh, go to the corporate um, um, uh, CGA. Um, and find an association, find something that you haven't done that may be a little bit out of your comfort zone. What's CGA? Uh, the Association for Corporate Growth. Okay. It's ACG, sorry. Uh -huh. uh, and there's one of those in, in you know, most even mid-tier kind of cities throughout the United States. 
and it's CXO level people. So if you're looking for business development contracts or, uh, but anyway, you, it's important that you get in a right room, not a, a, a room that has people that could help you with resources. And right. it's, you know, you can um, volunteer to be on a committee. I did that for the Utah Symphony, ended up working with a couple of really high-end folks that then helped me. Um, you know, one of my friends out of Salt Lake was recruited out of the East Coast to come to Salt Lake to be a wealth manager. And within just a few short years had this tremendous book of business with kind of the who's who in Park City. And I said to him one day, you know, you move here, you don't know a single person, you're black and you're gay. Uh, <laughs> not typical for a Salt Lake. And how did you do this? And he said, you know, I figured out where my customers hang out. And I went to the symphony and I paid a little extra so I could go to the break, you know, bread and drink a, a little wine event. And that's where I started making those critical connections. So think about, you know, who it is you need, what resources you need to need, and then where those people might hang out. So if you're looking for funding, if you're an entrepreneur or startup, you can go to pitch events, um, community colleges, universities that are involved with, with entrepreneurs. So there's always a match. You know, if you have a problem, there's a solution. Right. So it's about being strategic, uh, you know, look, thinking about what you what you need to accomplish and where to find the people who have the resources you're looking for and how to give value to them. Yeah. One of the things, one of the, oh, yeah. go ahead. No, no, go, please. Uh, one of the mistakes people make is not using the network they already have. And and this happens all the, all the time. I use an example. Uh, my literary agent, Wendy Keller, called me one day and said, hey, I want to introduce you to Mike. Mike sold Act Software for $45 million. He's got this new uh, software out that helps connect people you guys ought to meet. So I meet him in Salt Lake and I go, Mike, you know, I've never heard of your company. Uh, what are you doing for marketing? And he looked really sad and he said, you know, if I could just get in Success Magazine. And I said, when you get home, call Wendy who I've only known for six months, who you've known for years. Um, mm -hmm. She happens to be friends with the founder of Success Magazine. He almost <laughs> fell off his chair. Right. You, you already had the connection. Like, yeah. You need to like share your story, where you're at. Um, go through the people you know. Pick the top 25 to 50 people that you think might help you or could help you. You know, call them on the phone. Go for a coffee and say, here's where I am. Here's where I'm at. What other ideas do you have for me? And who else do you know I should talk to? And you'll right. be amazed. Well, one of the things you talk about is making sure you're not only connecting to people at this, who are at the same level as yourself. You know, a diversity of connecting to people who are quote unquote above you and also people who are below you. Yeah. So you just like describe, obviously you see how you could gain value from the people sort of above you. And you talk about people having resources that you need but what about the people below you? Where, where does that fit in? So everybody knows 800 to 1,000 people. And, and it's just fascinating to me. I once reached out to a, a personal assistant and just was randomly talking to her. And it turned out her uncle reported to Bill Gates. Uh -huh. I, and, and so you don't know. I mean, you can't judge people and certainly look for diversity. This morning, I was on a phone call with a woman that was a former anchor in New York City who has a platform that helps Asian uh, women um, just network and make connections that they need to know. I mean, make sure that you have people that don't look like you. And, you know, often people will call me and they've been an accountant for 25 years. What conferences do they go to? Only the ones for accountants. So guess who's in their network? Just accountants. So about right. the time they need a new job, uh, they're in trouble. And so diversity will bring you more powerful connections and opportunities. And it's like you've cast your net out there. And, you know, you could start with the Chamber of Commerce. You could start with your banker, your attorneys, and, and ask them who else they might know that you should talk to. And, and you will be amazed. Right. And uh, one of your golden questions you mentioned was prefacing that qu the question about who do you know with that I should talk to with what you're working on because that way they have a context for you to know yeah. how they could be helpful. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, initially I was worried about asking people how how could I help, but uh, you know, almost every time now I can figure out a way, way to, to help them. And so as your network expands, 
um, then you can make more connections. So you just start where you are. I mean, if there was anybody out there kind of terrified about it, you can write to me or, you know, connect with me on LinkedIn and I'll, you know, happily talk to you for a few minutes and, and give you some ideas. Well, speaking of those ideas, I mean, how, uh, you know, how do you tell people or how do you see people who want to get started doing this a little bit more, uh, what's the word, you know, doing, doing this a little bit more systematically or intentionally? Um, yeah. How do they, uh, I mean, I mentioned what I do. I set up, you know, whatever certain metrics I keep for myself every week uh, on, on referrals that I give and on, you know, acts of connection that I do. Uh, but what, what do you what do you see working for people uh, for how to get better at this? Yeah, so usually I will I will have people that are are shy and can't talk to people just start saying hello and smiling at people wherever they are. Um, and sure enough, somebody will ask you how you are, who you are, what you do. Um, and then the the other thing I do is have them call two people that are already in in that they know and uh, tell them where they're at, find out about them, where they're at, see if you can help them with anything and vice versa. Uh, and that usually gets the ball rolling really well. And then the third thing I have people do is go visit a group. So, you know, for instance, uh, I often tell professionals, you know, get equity. So go visit a local angel investing group and start meeting people there. You know, I volunteered at United Way back in the day when I hadn't studied finance and needed to learn how to do budgeting. Mm -hmm. So you can volunteer at, at organizations. Um, those things are really helpful. Right, it's helpful. And, and how, do you, how do you people, how do people connect now with new people when, you know, with all the COVID and I mean, look, hopefully vaccines coming out soon and, and may, maybe things will get back to, closer to what we consider normal, but who knows, uh, you know, in this time where there's a lot fewer in-person things going on, what are people doing differently to, you know, to connect to, to the right people? LinkedIn. So doing, doing some research on, on LinkedIn and, you know, the phone still works. So I actually have worked and done deals with people I've never personally met. And, you know, if you write a very nice, message on, on LinkedIn to someone and you've done your research and looked at them and what they're doing and have figured out maybe a way that you could you could help them and tell them you'd like to connect, um, you'll have no lack of, of connections. But again, you need to be clear on what your goal is. You know, Covey said, begin with the end in mind. Mm -hmm. He actually stole that from Benjamin Desraeli. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, what, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? And then what resources are you lacking and who might have those? And I also tell people, if you've got A and B, but you're lacking C, I can always help you get there. And, and you can learn to help yourself get there. There's no lack of resources, but they're all attached to people. Right, right. Yeah, no, I definitely, when I receive a message from somebody on LinkedIn, who's obviously customized that message to me and it's not a copy paste to who knows how many millions of people, I virtually always respond to them. Absolutely. Uh, even if it's something I'm not interested in. And I, and I know I'm not interested in it, but if it was like clearly like not a copy paste and not just, they just take out my name and changed it with somebody else's, uh, then I, I, mean, I know I respond. Um, even if it's to give them the courtesy of saying that I'm not interested, but like, you know, I at least give them a response like, because people do work like it, it means something. I don't know people, you know, do personalized yeah. work. They're interested in me, not just yeah, blanketing absolutely. the world. Yeah. Um, and you can always go through their LinkedIn contacts and see the caliber of people and, and who's in their network. Um, I've had, uh, I'm meeting with a, a fellow in California. He's raised all of his funding for real estate development fi by finding his LPs, his limited partners online in, in LinkedIn. Hmm. And so he will uh, search, use the filters to search. He's looked at, you know, specific groups that are on uh, LinkedIn revolving around, you know, real estate. Um, mm -hmm. There's lots of, you know, you can actually Google and find the top investors in town, the top family <laughs> Uh, offices in your your state. There's 400 angel groups. There's a new billionaire minute every second, and there's 40,000 millionaires in the United States. 
So, wow. um, and most of those people are looking for deals, looking for opportunities. Right. Well, I mean, speaking of deals and opportunities, uh, I mean, one of the things that you're you're speaking and working on a lot now is is funding. So the people, most of the people listening to this show are people with businesses that are not startups. They're not new startups. There are 10 people or more. Um, you know, I guess when do you, you know, and probably most of them get most of their funding again from cash flow, where they put in their own money or maybe they borrowed a little bit at the beginning, but then they, they didn't go the traditional like funded startup route. So what, you know, I guess what place do you find for business owners like that, that, uh, that, that funding has, when should, you know, when should they look at it as opposed to just the slow long haul growth? Uh, when should they look at funding and what place does that have for business owners like that? Yeah. So at some point, if you really do have a growth um, company, uh, you will need outside funding uh, to grow rapidly. And, you know, given that you've already bootstrapped and that you have sales, uh, that will make your valuation significantly higher than if you would have tried to raise money earlier, which means you give up less of your company. Uh -huh. um, but it also means that you'll be able to find strategic partners or funders who will be able to open significant doors for you. Um, you know, one of my friends is a VP of sales at, at Intel. I know people at SAP all over the place. Um, and those connections can be critical. So the corporate venture capital arms are often syndicated with the VCs. And so are sovereign wealth funds. So sovereign wealth funds have $10 trillion. It's like the equivalent of 8% of the global GDP. And they're now doing deals directly. So it isn't just about bringing in money, although that's great to meet your goals, but it's also opening up doors, whether it's business dev doors, right. uh, bringing in higher powered advisors. I often meet with companies and they tell me, uh, you know, I'd like to have a VP at one of these big companies uh, on my board. And that just, you know, you can imagine the difference between having one of those people on your board versus somebody locally or even regionally and right. what that will do as, as far as knowledge acquisition, uh, potential contracts, um, potential funding deals. So I think at some point people need to talk about what they could do if they had X amount of money, giving up X amount of equity and how the company is gonna grow. Right, right, no, that's, uh, that's, Right. That, that's, that's really fascinating. I mean, you know, and I get, and that connects, I guess, to what we've been talking about with, with me, you know, with making connections and, and meeting people, uh, meeting people in the places where you want to be and finding a way to give them value. You mentioned again, the three golden questions that people here are, you know, you know, what I'm working on, uh, what, what am I working on and who should I talk to? That was the first one, right? What was the second, yeah. what were the second two? Uh, the, the second one is, what other ideas do you have for me? Mm -hmm. And the third one is, who else do you know I should talk to? Right. Yeah. And, uh, and so that's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, look, it, it's, it's great stuff. You know, I, I use, uh, you know, I use, well, you know, I'm part of this EOS, Entrepreneurial Operating System. So it's a, a way for businesses to manage themselves at that 10 to 250 person size range. And, you know, there's a couple of programs I use out there that are that are designed to help businesses run on that. I run my own small, but even though I'm not that size, my own business, but I run it on that too, and you know, track these numbers. Use HubSpot, you know, just for for my CRM to keep track of all these people, and and uh, you know, so I, you know, I, I hope people do look. JudyRobinette.com, R-O-B-I-N-E-T-T. Am I getting that right? Right. So yeah, one B, right. yeah. one B, two Ts. Uh, so definitely check her out. You can reach out to her, as she said. So I'm not uh, volunteering too much yeah, there. And, and, and I do work with a couple of companies at a time that want my assistance to open significant doors for them, which I do. Uh, but happy to get on a call and, you know, happy to help you as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I, I definitely appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming on. And, uh, you know, please check her out. Check out her books. I definitely recommend people, again, look in the links below. To get uh, to get our books, Power Connector, and how to crack, you know, and the crack the funding code. Definitely recommend you check those out. And, and again, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And uh, we'll see everybody else on the other side. Thank you so much. Bye bye.
You're listening to Win Win, an entrepreneurial community with your host, Ben Wolf.